welcome back. Uh, so far we discussed uh, syntax of uh, predicate logic where we discussed about uh, what we mean by uh, terms, quantifiers, etc. and all what is the scope of a quantifier and when uh, and uh, we also discussed about uh, a particular things that uh, a given well formed formula uh, comes up with a unique formation tree and each term also comes up with a formation tree etc. So now what we will be uh, doing is we will be talking about the semantics of uh, the predicate logic. The semantics uh, means uh, uh, giving the meaning of a given formula. So meaning of a given formula means uh, giving truth conditions of that particular kind of given formula following Frege we will be taking that into consideration. So semantics of uh, uh, predicate logic is little bit different from that of uh, propositional logic. In propositional logic the meaning of a given complex uh, formula or molecular formula is solely determined by uh, the meaning of uh, uh, its constituents that means whatever values that the individual constituents takes and uh, in whatever way the connectives are and implies etc behaves based on that you can talk about the meaning of particular kind of given formula that means you are giving the truth conditions of the given formula. For example if you want to know the meaning of p implies q that means the truth condition of that one is whenever p is true q is false p implies q is going to be false. So things are not uh, as simple as in the case of uh, propositional logic uh, because in the predicate logic we will be, uh, we'll be using uh, uh, variables, predicates, functional symbols uh, etc. So now once you uh, uh, give the meaning of a given formula we need to take into consideration all these symbols that we are trying to use. We need to assign some kind of values to these these symbols that you come across in the predicate logic. So a language of L of a predicate logic is specified by its predicate symbols, functional symbols, variables and constants. So functional symbols, variables, constants and predicates they are the four building blocks of predicate logic and we need to have quantifies there exists some x for all x etc. So a single language will have many possible interpretations each suited to a different context or domain of discourse. For example if you have a particular kind of formula the same formula can be true of natural numbers and there is the same formula that we are trying to interpret in terms of a different domain let us say real numbers uh, other than natural numbers whole numbers etc which includes 0 also. So if you talk about uh, and, uh, whole numbers the same kind of formula may turn out to be false or if you are talking the same kind of formula the meaning of a formula with respect to integers and the meaning might change. So it, it is dependent on the domain that you are uh, using. So suppose if you have p of x y it will have different meanings with respect to let us say natural numbers maybe it might be true it may be false in, in natural numbers the same thing might be true in integers etc or maybe in the rational numbers it might be something else. So what we need is uh, we need to fix some kind of domain. So in order to talk about uh, the meaning of a given formula in the predicate logic two essential things are important first we need to fix the domain we need to fix that the domain consists of uh, let us say if you are talking about numbers you need to talk about either natural numbers or whole numbers or integers uh, non negative numbers positive numbers etc and the real numbers of course it includes all these things or if the same thing might be false with respect to irrational numbers etc. So, uh, so it might lead to multiple number of possibilities the same formula can be true in different interpretations. So we may view a function f as representing a kind of multiplication or plus or something a relation such as uh, x and y whatever is the maximum of x and y etc that will be considered as a function functional symbol. And essentially what we require is uh, the domain and there is some kind of uh, uh, thing which you require that is interpretation function which assigns some kind of values to constants, variables, predicates and uh, functional symbols. So the first and foremost thing which is essential for the semantics of uh, uh, formula in a given predicate logic 
is the domain of discourse and the intended meaning of um, meaning for predicates and the functional symbols. So that is taken care by uh, interpretation function i. So the first essential thing which you need is the domain and the other thing which you require is the interpretation function. So let us talk about uh, what we mean by these functional symbols. Uh, there are four symbols that we are essentially talking about. Uh, first is uh, functional symbols f g h it is represented by f g h etc and we have constants which represent some kind of individual objects in the domain like Socrates, uh, Ravi, Raju etc and all they are referring to some kind of individual entities and we have variables such as x y z etc it stands for anything uh, Socrates, Aristotle or anything and then we have predicates uh, it, which talks about some kind of relationship between uh, some kind of objects like something is red, something is white, beautiful etc or x is brother of y or y is father of z etc all these things are uh, predicates which essentially have some kind of property. So let us talk about what we mean by functional symbol. So functional symbol f takes n arguments and since uh, then f is called as unary function if it takes only one kind of thing it is called a unary function f of x is equal to y or f of x square is equal to z etc. Suppose if you are talking about binary function like uh, uh, x plus y for example it is a binary kind of function and all. So, so if there are n kinds of arguments and all it is called as unary function. So now individual or constants may be considered as a functional symbol that does not take any argument. Uh, so these things are considered to be individual constants. If predicate p takes n arguments then it is called as n place predicate for example unary predicates are for example x is mortal so that is m x uh, suppose if you want to say that x is brother of y so b x y so x and y are uh, uh, in some kind of order or if you want to talk about uh, uh, the tertiary predicates and all three place predicates then uh, we can give some examples for tertiary predicates etc. So if you use n kind of arguments and all it is called as n place predicate. So the thing minimal things which we need to note these are the four kinds of symbols that we are using individual symbols are constants which we have discussed just now they are usually names of objects such as duster, chalk piece etc, Ravi, India, Kanpur all these things comes under uh, referring to specific kind of uh, entities in your domain so they are called as constants individuals. So usually variables are replaced by these individual constants. So now there are other kinds of symbols in the domain so they are variable symbols why we are discussing all these things is because uh, for interpretation for giving the meaning of a given formula what you require is a domain and then we need to talk about uh, assigning some kind of uh, uh, values to these uh, four kinds of symbols. So variables are represented by x, y, z etc Maybe x can stand for uh, anything. So we are not just specifically mentioning what x is all about so they are all variables. So now this, the third thing is functional symbols they are represented by f g h usually plus minus multiplication all these things are called as functions uh, and the predicate symbols usually uh, they are represented as capital letters low greater than etc and all uh, beautiful all these things are predicates mortal all these things. So these are the four symbols that you come across you need to when you talk about meaning of a given formula you need to take care of all these symbols and we need to talk about some other things which are important for this one for defining the meaning of uh, for all x f x and all. So we require uh, some of the basic concepts such as ground term. So in the last uh, class we have seen that uh, in the formation of uh, formation tree for uh, a term uh, we have seen that in that particular kind of formation tree for that uh, thing we do not have any free variables then that particular kind of term is called as uh, a ground term. So a ground term is considered to be a term or an atom uh, which is said to be ground if it contains no variables. So a formula is ground if it has no quantifies and also no variables. For example, if you say something like uh, uh, 
uh, f of uh, g of c d and h c etc and all and if you draw the formation tree for this one it is going to be like this g c d and uh, h c and then it further reduces to c and d and c. So now here all these uh, terms are going to be constants. So you do not have any free variable here so that is the reason why this term is called as a ground term. A ground term is a term which, which does not consist of free variables and a formula is said to be ground if it has no quantifiers as you see here it does not have any quantifier and it has even no free variables in all. Free variables are x, y, z etc. So that is a thing which is, uh, which is considered to be a ground formula or a term is said to be ground in that particular sense it has no free variables. It has no variables that is the thing which you need to talk about not free variables a term uh, a formula is said to be closed uh, when it has no free variables. So this is the difference between closed term and the ground term. Ground term has no free variables no variables at all whereas closed formula does not have any free variables like for example in this case this is a formula uh, for example if you say uh, for all x for all y uh, p x y implies uh, uh, p y x and all, something like uh, this one. So all these uh, variables are bounded by these two quantifiers so that means there is no free variable in this particular kind of formula. So it is in that sense it is called as a closed formula and all the closed formulas in predicate logic they are considered to be sentences in the predicate logic and there are some formulas such as this one for all x for all z for example if you write like this p x z uh, for all x and for all y p x z implies p uh, something like y z and all. So now if you observe this particular kind of formula. Uh, x is bounded by this particular kind of quantifier whereas the occurrence of z uh, in both the uh, terms is considered to be free. So now it is in this sense it is called as a uh, formula in predicate logic but it is not considered to be a closed formula because it, it, it has free variables whenever you, a predicate logical formula has a free has free variables then it is considered to be uh, uh, it, it is not considered to be a closed formula it is considered to be uh, uh, yeah, just a formula and this is also not considered to be a sentence in predicate logic only closed formulas are going to be considered as sentences in uh, predicate logic. So this is one of the important distinction that we need to make out. So the other thing is what we mean by saying that something is considered to be a ground instance. For example there are two formulas A and A prime and A prime is considered to be ground instance of a quantifier free formula A if it can be obtained from A by substituting ground terms for some kind of free variables. For example if you have uh, something like uh, this one the same formula which you can take into consideration. Now uh, imagine that you have some kind of uh, uh, free variables like this uh, some, some formula which is there like this and uh, h x and all for example if you take this into consideration. Now one of the instances of this one is this thing. Uh, if you replace uh, this particular kind of variable x with some kind of uh, ground term just uh, t or anything which you can use then one instance of this one is like this. So this is the formula A let us assume that this is the formula A and one instance of this one when you remove this uh, existential quantifier and then substitute, it, substitute x with some kind of uh, ground variable like S T U V whatever it is then it is considered to be uh, the ground instance of this particular kind of 
formula. So now this will become let us say you are uniformly replacing x with t now h t. So now this is considered to be a ground instance of this particular kind of uh, formula. So uh, since uh, it is properly it is not called as a formula because uh, x uh, uh, here there is no variable which is uh, it has no free variables and all. Uh, so we can introduce another thing called H Z or something like that. So now H of uh, for Z you can replace it with uh, something like uh, U or something like that. So this is one of the instances of this particular kind of formula. So in the, it is in that sense A prime is an instance of ground instance of a formula E. So what happened here is simply this is that the free variables X is, rep is replaced by some kind of ground term. So when free variables in a formula is replaced by some kind of ground term then it is called as a ground instance. So now these are the examples of uh, ground terms F A A it does not have any free variable so that is why it is a ground term F A A Z B F of F of A B Z A all these things are ground terms. Examples of ground formulas are like this not of P A A implies P F of A B B and implies P A A and the formula the whatever is there down that is not of P F of A B B or P of A F of A A etc is a ground instance of this particular kind of formula. So that is so in not P F of X B Y or P X F of X X in that particular kind of formula X is replaced by A and Y is replaced by B. So it is in that sense it is a ground instance of that particular kind of formula. Uh, so this is uh, uh, considered to be a ground instance of a given formula. So uh, the variables x are repla replaced by ground terms then it will become ground instance of a given formula. So now these are some of the definitions that we need to use before talking about the meaning of a uh, meaning that means truth condition of a given well formed formula in the predicate logic. First we need to have a domain. So domain is usually considered to be a universe or uh, is also you can also talk about domain the name or universe of discourse sometimes in some textbooks it is written as universe of discourse etc. For the predicate variable uh, predicate law uh, variable is some set of values that may be assigned to a given kind of variables. It can be natural numbers a domain can be natural numbers a domain can be set of people a set of animals etc or set of uh, rivers etc they are all considered to be one particular kind of domain. So x stands for a variable which stands for rivers uh, that Ganga, Krishna and all these things come under that particular kind of category. So this is what we mean by domain it is considered to be an universe of discourse uh, and the second thing which we need to note is uh, something called truth set. For example if px is considered to be a predicate where x is uh, an individual entity which has that particular kind of property p like uh, x is mortal etc uh, is a predicate and x has this particular kind of domain u u can be anything it can be natural numbers it can be set of people etc and all then the truth set of uh, px that means we are talking about when this formula px is going to be true for example if you say that uh, all all humans are mortal means all will die at some day or other you represent it as uh, h x or something like that if x is a human being then x has to be mortal h x implies m x. So that particular kind of formula when that that is going to be true when you need to have domain u the set of people uh, in that context the set uh, the truth set of p x is considered to be set of all elements of t of u such that uh, that p and t has to be true that means a truth set is considered to be any term which belongs to the universe of discourse u such that that p when it is replaced by a ground term t and that has to be true. For example if you say all men are mortal suppose x is considered to be all humans and mx is considered to be h is considered to be humans 
and m is considered to be mortal. Now this is going to be true uh, when you have an instance where let us say something called HS, S stands for Socrates for example. It so happened that Socrates is human being and then Socrates is also mortal. In that case this, this is going to be true. Um, so this is this constitutes the truth set of a particular kind of predicate P X. So when it is replaced by a ground term that P T has to be true. It has to be true in all the cases then we represent it as this thing H X implies M X for all such kind of substitutions of uh, X if this becomes T then we write it in this way for all X if X is a human being then X has to be uh, mortal in the same way all crows are black. So if uh, X is a crow then X has to be black if it happens for all the crows that you have seen so far then it will be it should be written in this particular kind of sense. So this is what we mean by truth set and for example if you say if you take the universe of discourse as uh, natural numbers from 1 to 10 1 to 3 4 to 10 now P X is considered to be uh, some kind of property which uh, X has that is X is considered to be even number. So then if you take uh, this particular kind of uh, thing P X is considered to be uh, X is even and then we have uh, a set such as uh, universe of discourse is 1 to 10. So now, uh, now the truth set that means when this P X is going to be true uh, only when you take this particular kind of numbers. So when to when that particular kind of P X uh, uh, that it satisfies this particular kind of thing X is even then only then this is considered to be truth set 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 all satisfies this particular kind of property that X is going to be even. For example if it is X is X is odd then that particular kind of set is going to be uh, this is considered to be the truth set of this one. Suppose if you take the predicate as X is odd then all these things will come into X 7 and 9 and that is it. Suppose if you take uh, this particular kind of uh, set uh, the same set 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and all and then your uh, predicate is uh, uh, this that X is odd then this is not considered to be the truth set with respect to this kind of predicate and all P X is going to be false in that case because it is any number that you take into consideration is not even it is not odd all are even so that is why that is not considered to be the truth set with respect to P X X is odd. So truth set in a sense that when uh, given a universe of discourse u and a predicate uh, property which is attributed to the uh, uh, some kind of individual x uh, then under what conditions P X property satisfies you know. So then uh, based on that you can talk about the truth set in some context it is true some other context it is going to be false if you take all odd numbers then suppose if you have universe of discourse as uh, all natural numbers till 10 and P X X is even then uh, this particular kind of set 2, 3, uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 etc that is going to be false. So this is what we mean by truth set when the predicate is going to be true is the one which you have taken into consideration. Now uh, let us talk about uh, the quantifiers now. So basically essentially what we are trying to do is the building blocks of uh, the predicate logic are variables, constants, functions and predicates. We need to address all these four things before talking about the meaning of a given formula. So now quantifiers we may convert predicates into propositions by assigning values to all the variables that means suppose if you have uh, some predicates such as Px such that x is even you can convert it into some kind of proposition suppose if replace it replace x with a ground term 6 then uh, that Px P6 and 6 is even that will turn out to be a preposition. So all the predicates are reduced to prepositions uh, when you replace uh, x with uh, some kind of uh, ground terms uh, like 6, 7 etc. 
So now universal quantifier, uh, it is represented as for all x. Uh, universal quantification on Px is considered to be a statement which is uh, written in this sense. It is considered to be a predicate Px and Px holds for all values of x in that particular kind of universe. Suppose if you take the universe of discourse as crows, all the crows and then Px is considered to be something like x is black then uh, that for all x Px has to hold for all the crows that you have taken in the universe of discourse. Even if for one particular crow which is turned out to be white and all then Px will not hold. So for that property Px holds for all values of x then we call it as uh, for all x Px and it is represented as universal quantifier. So which is written in uh, logical notation as for all x Px or sometimes in some other textbooks it is written as this thing for all x where x belongs to some kind of universe of discourse D so that Px that means Px holds for all x. So different ways of reading this universal quantifier that is uh, same thing it stands for the same thing for all x Px sometimes you can say that for every x Px uh, for every x Px is considered to be true that means Px satisfies or the other way of saying is for all x some px holds and all. So there are some terms such as any the term any phrase any sometimes it act like a universal quantifier sometimes it, it acts like a uh, existential quantifier. So depending upon the thing we, we, one may use it as universal or one might use it as existential quantifier. Let us consider some examples and consider a domain to be natural numbers natural numbers are 1 to all positive kind of numbers 1 to infinity and if you add 0 to it it will become whole number and then if you add all minus 1 to minus infinity then it will become integers and then uh, if you add all the rational numbers to that particular kind of thing all the fractional numbers including minus etc and all then it will become q rational numbers and if you have real numbers whole numbers uh, sorry rational numbers natural numbers and integers etc and all and that will constitute uh, real numbers and then if uh, if something is called as a complex number which is different from the real numbers so that is a d different kind of domain and all other than uh, real numbers real numbers has all these things whole numbers natural numbers uh, integers uh, rational numbers etc okay consider a domain to be natural number now consider a predicate p x y x and y are related in this sense uh, in this way where uh, p x y is represented in this sense if x and y are added to each other it will you will get a value 10 now assign value x to be 1 and y to be 9 and you have taken 1 and 9 from this domain uh, set of natural numbers 1 and 9 are considered to be natural numbers only if you add 1 and 9 it satisfies this particular kind of property p x plus y uh, x plus y is equal to 10. So that means p 1 9 satisfies this uh, particular kind of thing that is considered to be true. So now if you take another proposition in another in thing into consideration another values 2 and 5 2 and 5 adds to 7 only it will not, is not equivalent to 10 that means p 2 5 does not satisfy this particular kind of formula that is that means if you take the values 2 and 5 pxy x plus y is equal to 10 is not going to be satisfied in that sense it is false. So if you take 5 plus 5 then of course that is going to be true. So now if you change the uh, domain to be uh, negative integers uh, integers also then for example if you take uh, x as minus 1 and y as uh, uh, 9 uh, in some cases it might be the case that uh, uh, suppose if you take uh, natural numbers. Uh, in some cases this holds and all but this is not going to hold for all the all x and all. So whatever x that you are going to take into consideration and whatever y that you are going to take into consideration pxy uh, that is x plus y does not add up to 10. So it is in that sense you write it write this particular kind of formula as this thing since it holds for only some kind of uh, properties. Uh, there exists some x and there exists some y uh, p x and y if it holds for all the properties and all which is not the case in this one then you can write for all x and for all y 
p x y where p x y is defined as x plus y is 10 it holds only if it holds for at least one particular kind of uh, uh, values of x and y then you write it in this sense there exists x there exists some y p x y otherwise uh, if you write it as for all x and y for all y p x y that is going to be false. So let us talk about the existential quantifier uh, is represented as there exists some x um, usually if you, you write it in this sense uh, existential quantifier is usually considered as a disjunction whereas universal quantifier is considered to be a conjunction of all the formulas and all that means at least one particular kind of thing is false the entire conjunction is going to be false so so in the case of existential quantifier even if one disjunct is uh, false if at least one can one disjunct is true it is enough for us to say that that particular kind of formula is true. So the symbol uh, it is represented by a symbol there is some x uh, sometimes it you represent it as for some x etc. Existential quantification p x is considered to be a statement which, which needs to be read like this a particular kind of property p x which holds for some values of x in the universe. I mean some values of x means if there is at least one x which satisfies this particular kind of property then that will serve our purpose or equivalently you can also say that there exists a, a value for x such that that particular kind of p x is going to be true. So in the last example p, p x y uh, where x plus y is equal to 10 that is going to hold at least for some values of x and y. Uh, there exists some x there exists some y p x y that is going to be true but the same formula uh, may not be true for all the values of x and for all values of y for example if you take uh, x as uh, 7 and then y as 5 then 7 plus 5 is equal to 12 which is not equal to 10 which does not satisfy that p x y uh, is equal to x plus y. So that formula can only be written as there exists x there exists some y p x y x plus y is equal to 10. If p x is considered to be true for at least one element in the domain then there exists some x p x is going to be true otherwise it is going to be false. In the case of uh, for all x it has to be true for all the elements of the domain otherwise it is going to be false. So that is the difference between existential and the universal quantifiers. So now this is the way to uh, interpret the quantifies for all x a x that is going to be true in uh, in v if that means a domain some kind of domain if all the individuals in v satisfies a x that particular kind of property a x in the same way there exists some x a x is going to be true in a domain d or v if and only if at least one particular kind of uh, uh, one of the individuals in uh, l or v satisfies your property that a x is the case a x holds for some at least one value then you call it as there exists some x a x is true. So now uh, in a very informal way we discussed about the truth values of uh, quantifiers uh, etc and all are a given formula and we just uh, indicated that uh, the same formula is going to be true with respect to can be interpreted in different ways that means uh, same formula sometimes it can be true in some domain like if you take only natural numbers into consideration it might be true or in some other cases if you take the real numbers into consideration that means all the whole numbers etc and all then the same formula might be false as well. So how to formally uh, talk about uh, how we can formally express uh, truth of a given formula in the first order logic, first order logic is also called as predicate logic, uh, quantificational logic and all uh, where the variables are ranging over. Uh, individual sentences which are there in the domain it is not uh, uh, not we, we do not mean by predicates and uh, functional symbols etc no. variables are not ranging over predicates functional symbols etc no. if you talk about those things you are talking about second order logic. So truth of a sentences in predicate logic uh, uh, it is determined by uh, something called as modal. Uh, we use this uh, words interchangeably and all modal structure interpretation these three terms are one of the same. 
So some, some form, a formula is going to be true with respect to a modal. In the same way we discussed uh, the propositional logic, uh, we discussed about a given formula with respect to a modal. Uh, so uh, in the same way we, we can talk about uh, uh, the truth value of a given formula with respect to a modal or a structure. So we need to define what we mean by modal interpretation or structure. Now the semantics of predicate logic depends upon two important things are important two important things which we need to note. So they are first is the domain and the second one is the interpretation function i. It depends upon the domain of individuals and the semantic values of uh, the constants, predicates, variables, etc. that uh, is going to take. So now a model consists of obviously the objects in the domain and the relationship between these uh, uh, objects in within the domain an interpretation function so first of all what uh, constitutes a domain uh, a domain constitute of uh, the objects which are there in the domain for example set of people a set of all inanimate things etc and all for example those who doesn't have life etc chalk piece dusters tables chairs etc and all or set of uh, uh, trees for example that is constitutes some kind of set of plants for example all the trees etc are come under that kind of category so a model consists of an objects and relations among uh, them and then we have an interpretation function which defines references for these particular kind of symbols so what are the three things which are there in the predicate logic constants predicate symbols and uh, functional symbols and variables so now constants and variable symbols should find out some kind of uh, uh, object in the domain and predicate symbols have some kind of relations in the domain D and the functional symbols uh, have some kind of uh, uh, corresponding uh, thing in the domain that is functions from an object to another kind of object. So it takes these uh, values and all. Now the definition of interpretation is like this. So interpretation means giving assigning some kind of truth values to a given formula in the case of propositional logic. So it is not as simple as uh, in the case of propositional logic In the predicate logic when you when you say that interpretation you need to take into consideration uh, what values that we have variables etc constants and functional symbols are going to take that is also we need to take into consideration. An interpretation for an expression in a predicate logic consists of the following things first to start with we need to have a domain of the interpretation which must include at least one particular kind of object sometimes the domain can also be empty so in the empty domain uh, suppose if uh, property such as px for all x px is going to be true it is going to be vacuously true whereas if we talk about there exists some x px with respect to empty domain that is going to be false we are going to see in a while from now the difference between these things. So in general if you talk about a domain it is usually taken into consideration that the domain is non empty you do not talk about a domain such as set of uh, suppose if you are talking about a particular kind of formula tall men are mortal Socrates man Socrates mortal and we do not uh, we do mean by saying that at least some kind of uh, objects exist in the domain that, that means you need to take into consideration some kind of domain which consists of some people at least. So if you do not talk about our, any kind of people and all if you talk about animals etc and all that does not make any sense to talk about this particular kind of thing all the formulas are going to be vacuously true that means all the universal uh, and the form, formulas which are expressed by universal quantifiers are obviously going to be vacuously true. So now usually domain is considered to be usually non-empty at least one or some objects needs to be there in the domain and then uh, an assignment of a property of the objects in the domain to each predicate in the expression and you need to have an assignment of a particular object in the domain to each constant symbol in that particular kind of expression then that constitutes what we call it as interpretation for example if you say that uh, there is a formula such as there exists some x r x y e now the same formula in some domains it is going to be true and some other domains it might be false let us consider 
a domain of individuals to be set of all people and then we are trying to evaluate this formula there exists some x r x y we need to talk about what we mean by r x y also the set of all people who, who have ever lived in this world uh, those whosoever has not lived in the world doesn't make any sense to talk about this particular kind of formula and then we are also taking into consideration r x y that means the relation between x and y it is like this x is considered to be a parent of y so now if we take y to be Mahatma Gandhi then uh, usually we call him as uh, father of the nation etc father of everyone so uh, x is a, uh, a parent of uh, y in that sense there exists uh, uh, of course we are not talking about for all x r x y we are just talking about there exists some x uh, such that x can be Ravi or something like that x can be Mahatma Gandhi and x uh, r x y stands for x is a parent of uh, that particular kind of y, y can be called, treated as Mahatma Gandhi. You know. What it essentially says is, is that every person who is who existed in this world have at least father and all. So, so x is considered to be parent of y. In that sense, there exists some x, r x y is going to be true. So now, if you take uh, y to be Mahatma Gandhi, then the sentence is obviously going to be true. And anything which you put it put it for y, everyone has a parent, so that's why there exists some x r x y is obviously going to be true suppose if you take uh, for the for the sake of uh, fun we can take into consideration adam eve etc and all uh, we don't know whether uh, adams adam and eve are parents etc and all so the same formula uh, there exists some x r x y in that particular kind of domain where you have these objects adam eve etc and all uh, that sentence may probably be false you know. So what I am essentially trying to say is, is that the same formula have different interpretations. So in some depending upon the domain and the interpretation. So now let us formally define what we mean by a structure or interpretation or uh, model etc. All these things the terms are one of the same. This is a somewhat technically a little bit uh, complicated kind of definition. This definition is uh, usually taken uh, is taken from uh, Tarski's work. Uh, Tarski has come up with uh, this particular kind of definition, which is, has been changed into our concern. And uh, this definition is like this: a structure A or a model, which consists essentially consists of a domain and set of uh, I mean, an interpretation function i. A structure A for a language. L that is a language of predicate logic consists of non empty domain that means the domain has to be a non empty at least one particular kind of object should exist in the domain and an assignment that is the interpretation function which assigns to each enary predicate symbol R of L that particular kind of predicate logic of an actual predicate R A on the n tuples these are the terms A1, A2 to An from A and there is going to be an assignment to each constant symbol C of L to an element C to the power of A of that particular kind of uh, domain A and to each energy function symbols L there is an energy function F A from uh, D to the power of N that is a domain uh, D to the power of N to T. So what essentially uh, we are trying to say here is like this. So we have uh, this uh, particular kind of uh, thing and all as a domain uh, this structure consists of domain and interpretation function. So this domain has to be non-empty that means at least some set of uh, some objects needs to be there in the domain. It can also be we can also take into consideration the domain as empty but in general we take uh, non-empty domain and all and interpretation function uh, is represented as I. So now, uh, so what we are essentially saying is we have uh, constants, we have variables, we have functional symbols and we have predicates. So now these predicates have to be mapped to something in the domain uh, which, has, uh, which has to be either true or false. In the, same, in the case of uh, truth sets that we have seen, uh, Px where x is even. 
um, that particular kind of px has to be uh, true. It is going to be true when you take all the even numbers and all. And if you take all the odd numbers, px is going to be false. So that has to be mapped to something such as t and f. So now you have constants. Uh, this is a domain. Uh, NRE functional symbols. We have seen what we mean by this constants, uh, NRE functional symbols and NRE predicates. And each one is mapped to uh, some kind of uh, individual in the domain. That means we are assigning some kind of values to this one. Constants, NRE functions and NRE predicates. Uh, and NRE functional symbols for each NRE function that, you, that exists in the domain you have corresponding NRE functional symbol in the domain and uh, each uh, NRE predicate symbols uh, you have uh, NRE uh, predicate um, symbol uh, symbol to function uh, function that is d and 2 it maps to some kind of uh, there are only two entities here as it has to be true or it has to be false px is false or px is true that particular kind of thing and all uh, usually the interpretation over domain is considered to be an assignment of entities of d to each of the constant variables predicates functional symbols and the predicate uh, calculus expression such that uh, here what we are trying to do is each constant is assigned to uh, some kind of element in the domain D that is we are basically assigning some kind of uh, entities to constants, variables, uh, functional symbols and the predicate symbols that means we are assigning this some kind of values to these things. So now each variable x, y, z, etc is assigned to a non-empty set of uh, uh, domain where uh, these are the allowable substitutions for that particular kind of variable. For example, x, y, z, it can be substituted by Socrates uh, uh, or uh, uh, Ravi, Raju, Rajesh, etc. and all. And they all should exist in the domain and all, that particular kind of domain. So now each function uh, f of arity m, nre function, is defined on m assignments of d and defines some kind of mapping from d n to d to the power of m to d that is uh, m stands for the number of arguments e to the power of m maps to d. So if you have 0 arguments it will be d of 0 to d. So each predicate p of arity n is defined as arguments from d and defines a mapping from d n to some kind of set of values t and f. So now what we are essentially doing here is like this to each constant we assign some kind of element in the domain D and also to each n plus functional symbol we assign a mapping from g to the power of n where n is considered to be number of arguments n depends upon the n plus functional symbol and where d n is considered to be uh, 1 into n etc d1 d, d2 d3 d n and to each n place predicate symbol we assign a mapping from uh, d to the power of n to some kind of value 0 and 1. So that means the predicate is going to take some kind of value either 0 or 1. So now this is what we have done so far d assigns to the quantifier for all x a non-empty set d which is called as the domain of the universe first thing. And uh, a structure uh, A assigns to each n place predicate symbol R an NRE relation. R A is a subset of D n, where D n is considered to be tuples of members of the universe, and A assigns to each constant symbol C a member of C to the power of A of the universe or the domain, and A assigns to each NRE function symbol, as which we have been discussing, uh, n NRE operations f to the power of A on D. This is a much more formal way of saying the same thing. So essentially what we are trying to do is we need to have uh, a domain and we need to have uh, some kind of uh, interpretation function uh, which 
interpretation mapping or something like that, uh, which assigns some kind of values to variables, constants, predicates, and functional symbols. So, uh, in this context, let us talk about interpretation of ground terms. Uh, a term that contains no free vari no variable is considered to be a ground term, and each constant term sees uh, names that particular kind of element as c to the power of a. A is considered to be the structure, uh, the domain. If the terms t1 to tn uh, of L name the elements such as t1 to the power of a, t to the power of a, t to the power of n a of the domain D, and f is energy functional symbol L, then the term f of f of t1 to tn that is also considered to be a term, which names the element f of t1 to tn to the power of a as f to the power of a t1 rise to the power of a to tn to the power of a of a domain a. So now just one, uh, let us consider one particular kind of example and then we will close this uh, lecture then we will talk about some more examples a little bit later. So now let us consider the predicate p x y in a language L. Now we take the domain to be natural numbers n and we have a functional symbol that is less than uh, here c and d are considered to be constants for example then we can assign to elements uh, c to the power of a d to the power of a as follows c to the power of a is considered to be 0 and d to the power of a is considered to be 1. Now if you take the rational numbers with uh, q uh, which is again represented as less than then in that context uh, we, uh, the constants are represented in this sense 1 divided by 2 d to the power of a stands for 2 by 3 etc. And if you take the integers into consideration with uh, uh, the relation uh, functional symbol greater than we have constants uh, represented as c to the power of a as 0 or d to the power of a as minus 2. So uh, in this uh, lecture uh, what we have done is, is that we just talked about uh, what we mean by uh, a structure uh, or a model and we have said that uh, depending upon the model or uh, structure a given predicate logical expression will find its meaning we find its meaning in with respect to a model. The same kind of formula uh, can be true in some structures, the same kind of formula can be true uh, false in the same kind of uh, uh, structure. <coughs> so what matters to us the most is the domain that you are trying to take into consideration. Same formula can be true with respect to natural numbers but it can be false with respect to integers with respect to some other kinds of things. So in this lecture we defined what we mean by uh, giving interpretation or uh, structure or model for uh, a given predicate logical expression. So in the next class we will be considering some more examples and then we will be talking about some of the important decision procedure methods in the predicate logic and to start with we use semantic tableaux method because this uh, which occupies the central position in our course. So we will be talking essentially about the semantic tableaux method and in that context we will be talking about uh, different logical properties such as when a given formula is valid, when a particular formula is considered to be uh, consistent, satisfiable all these things which we will be talking about in greater detail in the next few lectures.